Hey yogis, I'm Corey. Today we're going to be talking about the sacral chakra and different ways to open up our hips using yoga poses. If you're not familiar with the Svadhisthana chakra or the sacral chakra, it's right around your hip area. It's our center of emotional and creative expression and sensuality. Sometimes it gets blocked when we're feeling guilty or ashamed about something. And I've heard a lot of teachers say that the hips are the attic or the Tupperware of the body because we use them to store a lot of our pent up emotion or stuff that we're just not ready to deal with in the moment. It gets stored there and then we get really tight or really blocked in our hips and we need to move them around to open them up. So hopefully today we'll give you some poses that you can do to loosen up in the hips. We'll get started down on our back in Supta Baddha Konasana. Bring the bottoms of your feet together, your knees out wide. You can place your hands down on your hip points. Let them rest somewhere around the sacral chakra area, somewhere around your hips. If this doesn't feel good on your hips, remember you can take your feet wide, as wide as the mat, and let your knees knock in together. We'll just be here for a few moments, bringing our attention onto our mats, into our bodies. Start to feel your belly fill up with breath. Start to scan into your body. Notice how you're feeling in this moment. And then take a scan right into the hips. Are they really open? Are you a person who's really loose in your hips? Or are they tight and it's uncomfortable even just to lie here like this? And remember without passing judgment, we just take a scan of how our hips are feeling right here and right now. Take a deep breath, fill up all the way into your belly. Maybe you even feel yourself expand in that sacral region. Exhale, softly release the breath. Take another deep inhale, fill all the way up. Exhale, slowly let the air go. On your next inhale, reach down, close up your knees. We'll gather the knees up into our chest, give yourself a quick squeeze, and then we'll reach in between the knees for the outsides of the feet. Take happy baby here. Or you grab whatever is accessible to you. You can take hold of your ankles or your shins. We'll keep the back grounded on the mat. Draw your knees as close into your armpits as you can. Take a rock from side to side. Take another inhale here. And keep your rock going on your exhale. And draw the knees back up into your chest. This time we'll take the hands and place them on tops of the knees. Then like you have two oars and you're rowing a boat, draw your knees in close toward you. Separate them, press them away from you. Draw them back together and pull them back in. Now start to take these circles in this direction. You feel what works for you, going as slowly or as quickly as feels nice. And if you come to a sticky area, feel free to stop and work into it or just hold it there and breathe. We'll take one more circle in this direction and then start to switch it up, come into the opposite direction. And take two more circles here. Really feeling into the hip joint and moving it around just so it can start to loosen up. And when you finish that second circle, draw your knees in. This time take hold of the backs of your hamstrings. We'll give a couple rocks here, just enough to gain momentum and make your way into a tabletop position. If there's a better way for you to get onto all fours, feel free. Spread your knees as wide as the edges of your mat. Let your big toes touch back behind you. And then we're going to start to circle the hips out in one direction. So drop them back, shift them over to the side, draw them to the front, and then let them fall over to the other side and back behind. Starting to take your circles this way. Add in any movements that feel good. If you want to drop your belly all the way down towards the floor as you crawl to the front, that's okay. 
Just feel how your hips are feeling. Practice noticing the different sensations based on the way you move in your body. So much of yoga is just noticing these subtle movements, which can be really interesting. And take another circle to this side. And then start to switch up your circles, take it in the opposite direction. And you may find that if your hips are really tight, you don't move all that much. That's okay, you really want to focus on what you're feeling and just bringing some movement into this area of the body that can be so tight for some people. Give me one more circle on this side. And then come back onto all fours. Bring your knees right under your hips. Hands stay underneath your shoulders. We'll take a few rounds of cat and cow here. So drop your belly down, draw the shoulders back, chin lifts high, gazes up. Exhale, round into your back. Inhale, drop back down into cow pose. Shift your heart forward as the shoulders pull back. Exhale, squeeze your chin down towards your chest. Feel the shoulder blades spread apart. One more round, just like this. Exhale, round it like a cap. Come back to your tabletop. We'll just shift the hips over to the right and then over to the left. Swing them back and forth a couple more times. Once more to each side. As you're ready, we'll make our way to our downward facing dog. Take an inhale to rise up high on the balls of both feet. As you exhale, bend into both knees, drop your hips over to the right. Inhale up through center. Exhale, drop both hips over to the left. Inhale up through center. Exhale, let your heels lower down towards the mat. On your next inhale, bring your feet together. Lift your right leg up high, and then we'll bend the knee, stack your hip open. Bring your heel in really close to your glute. And we'll take a few really big circles with your top knee. Make about four circles in this direction. And then we'll switch it up, take it to the other way, four times. On an inhale, re-extend the leg back behind you. Exhale, step your foot up in between your hands. Lower the back knee down, untuck your back toes, and then we'll reach our arms up by your ears, settling into Anjaneyasana. We'll sink down into our hips so we can open up the front of the left hip, but still think about hugging everything in towards your center line. So your right hip still pulling back even as you sink low into the hips. Inhale, reach your fingers high, bring your gaze up high. Exhale, bring your hands down to the inside of your front foot. Walk your right toes over to the right side. Find a lizard pose here, up high on your palms or lower down on your forearms. We'll let the knee roll out to the side, so start to shift onto the outside edge of your right foot. Come back to your inhale and your exhale breath here. On your next inhale, we'll press the weight back into your hands, straighten through the arms, tuck your back toes under, we'll lift the right leg up and back, stack the hip open. Inhale here. Exhale, set your right knee, your right foot back down on the mat. Next inhale, we'll take the left foot high. Exhale, bend your knee, stack the hip open. Start to dig your big circles one way. Make about four to this side. And then switch it up and circle it out in the other direction. And take one more big circle, and then we'll re-extend the leg back behind you. Inhale here. 
Exhale, step it up between your hands. Lower your back knee down, untuck the back toes. Find Anjana Asana on this side. Hug your belly button in towards your spine. Make sure your front knee is not going too far past your front ankle and then sink down low. Take an inhale, bring your gaze up towards your fingertips. Exhale, both hands come down to the inside of your front foot. Walk your foot over to the edge of your mat. Find your variation of lizard pose. Once you're settled in, if it feels okay on your knees, start to roll out onto the outside edge of your left foot, letting the hip fall open. Take another breath in here. Stay for your exhale, soften into your head. And press the weight back into your palms. Tuck the back toes under. And we'll lift the left foot up and back. Stack your knee open. Inhale here. Exhale. Set your left foot back down on the mat. Your downward facing dog will bring the right heel up and back behind you. Exhale. Step the foot up in between your hands. Set up for warrior one, so make your stance a little wider or shorter if you need to. Drop the back heel down. Bring the arms up by your ears. And take a nice deep bend in the front knee. Keep both hips pointing square to the front of your mat. Inhale here, feel a nice stretch in the front of your left hip. Exhale, interlace the hands back behind you. Squeeze your knuckles down your back thigh and we'll fold into humble warrior. As you tuck your right shoulder to the inside of your right knee, think about your hips in this pose. So we'll start to draw the right hip back a little bit and you should feel some opening in the outside of that hip. The left hip's pulling towards the front of your mat. Let your head and your neck relax as much as they can. Make another inhale here. On your exhale, press down through the front foot to rise back up to your warrior one. From here, we'll find a high lunge. So let your back heel spike up. I like to make my stance a little wide, a little longer. Excuse me. And then bend a bit into your back knee. That'll really deepen the intensity of the stretch in the front of your left hip. Still keep your tailbone pointing down towards the floor, hugging your belly button in towards your spine. Inhale here, gaze high. Exhale, bring your hands down around to frame your front foot. We'll lift the right foot up and back. Exhale, bring that foot down to meet the left. Bring your left foot high back behind you. Exhale, step your foot up in between your hands. Make some space between your feet. We'll lower the back heel down, reach the arms up by the ears to find warrior one. Make sure your hips are square to the front of your mat. Outside edge of your back foot is pressing down. Start to feel an opening in the front of your right hip. Inhale here. Exhale, bring your hands back around behind you. Interlace your hands with the opposite finger on top. Stretch your knuckles down your back thigh. And then start to fold into your humble warrior. This time the left shoulder tucks to the inside of the left knee. We keep the bend in the front knee and draw your left hip back. That'll give the right hip a little room to slide forward. Keep pressing down through both feet. And fix your gaze on a point in your mat that's not moving. And take another inhale and exhale breath here in your humble warrior. On our next inhale, we'll start to rise back up to warrior one. Lift the back heel up, spike your back heel to the sky, and then start to bend into your back knee. So we bring a little deeper stretch into the front of the right hip. Tailbone comes to point down towards your mat. Belly button hugging in so we don't have an arch in the low back or not a significant arch. 
Take another inhale here. Exhale, bring your hands down around to frame your front foot. Lift the back, lift that foot up and back behind you. Exhale, bring it back down to your mat. Inhale the right leg high. Exhale, step the foot up in between your hands. We'll set up for warrior two this time. Lower your back heel down, cartwheel the arms open. And just standing here in warrior two can be a bit of a hip opener. We're externally rotating our front thigh. We're pressing down to the outside edge of our back foot. So you already start to feel your hips being opened. And we'll inhale here. On our exhale, we're going to come to skandasana at the back of your mat. So we'll bring our hands together, start to straighten through your front leg. Turn your back toes out, and then we'll come down into Skandasana, only lowering as far as your knee will allow. So you could come all the way down here, or your Skandasana could be up here in a nice gentle squat. See what feels better on your hips and your knees. On our inhale, we'll straighten the arms apart from each other. Exhale, bring your palms back together, and we'll start to shift back into our warrior two. Inhale here. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down around to frame your front foot, let your back heel spike high. Next inhale, we'll lift the right arm up to the sky. On your exhale, start to turn all 10 of your toes to the right edge of your mat. You might step your right foot back a little bit, especially if you have problems with your knee. We'll come to the supported side plank, pressing down through both feet, lift the hips high. If you like, you can extend your top hand towards the front of the room. Inhale here. Exhale, bring your right hand down. We'll step the right foot back into a plank pose. Lower through a vinyasa here if you like. Or skip it and we'll meet straight back in downward facing dog. When your feet come together. Lift the left heel high back behind you. On an exhale, step your foot up in between your hands. Lower the back heel down, unwind your arms, come up to your warrior two, and take a moment to feel into how this is a hip opener for you. We want our back toes pointing up at a bit of an angle towards the right corner of your mat. Pressing down through both feet like you could pull them apart from each other. Take a nice breath in here. On your exhale, start to straighten through the front leg. Bring the palms together in front of your heart. Back toes turn out. Find your version of Skandasana. Remember, it can be just right here, or we can sink all the way down, bringing the hips a little closer to the ground. Inhale, open the arms straight apart from each other. Exhale, palms come back together. And we'll make our way back into warrior two, using your core to engage along the way. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the mat. Lift the back heel up to the sky. On an inhale, we'll reach the left arm up, coming to a twisted lunge. And then we'll start to turn all ten toes to face the left edge of the mat. Remember, if it bothers your knee at all, walk your, back, your left foot back a little bit. Press down into your feet, lift the hips up high. Maybe extend your top arm towards the front of the mat. Inhale here. Exhale, left hand comes down. We'll square off the hips. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Take a vinyasa here if you please. We'll inhale the right heel up and back behind you. Exhale, slide your right knee up behind your right wrist. Start to cross your ankle over towards your left wrist. And then we'll walk the back toes back. Find a proud pigeon drawing your heart forward. Make sure your hips are both square to the front of your mat. You can always bring a pillow right underneath this booty cheek here. Inhale. Exhale, start to lower into your pigeon. That can be staying up on your palms, down on your forearms, or walk the arms straight out in front of you. 
Lower down and in. Breathe deeply down into your hips. If you could direct the breath to anywhere where you're feeling extra tight, where there's resistance. As you exhale, feel your belly soften into your shin or your thigh. We'll take another inhale on this side. Exhale, release the breath. On your next inhale, start to walk your hands back to the top of your mat. We're going to sit over into the right side. Sweep your left leg around. It'll come all the way in front of you and then cross over to the outside of your right thigh. Make sure both sits bones are grounded into the mat. If your bottom knee is bothered, you can extend that leg straight out in front of you. We'll take the left hand back behind us, reach the right arm to the sky, and then we'll come into a seated twist here. And when you think about your twist, think about driving your sits bones down into the mat. And don't let the twist come so much from your arm pressing into the side of your leg or from hugging your knee in. Let it come from your hips pressing down into the mat. And then you'll feel it a little bit lower in the outside of your left butt. You can gaze back behind you if that feels all right on your neck. Take an inhale here. Exhale, release the breath. Twist a little deeper. And we'll start to unwind, come to face forward. And we'll bring both legs back behind you so we can bring the hands back to the top of your mat. Make your way back into downward facing dog. You can always throw in a vinyasa there along the way if it serves your practice. We'll inhale to take the left foot up to the sky. Exhale, bring the left knee up behind the left wrist. Ankle comes across your mat as close to, or making your shin as close to parallel to the front of your mat as you can. Walk the back toes back, get your hips set up and square. And then we'll start to walk our way out into our pigeon on the side. And remember your options, any way you like to modify. And if your attention starts to slide away from your mat, or if you find your mind really resistant to holding this pose, remember you can always come back to your breath. Focusing in on your inhale and your exhale. And that we won't be here forever. Notice any emotions that are starting to be released or any discomfort that it causes to be here. Take another deep breath in on this. Stay right here for your exhale. Next inhale, we'll start to walk our way back up. Bring your hands back to the top of your mat. Sit into your left side this time. The right foot will sweep around and then stamp it down on the outside of your right thigh. Your left thigh, excuse me. And then we'll bring the right fingertips back behind you. Start to come into your twist here. Make sure both sits bones are in line or pressing down into the mat. Then maybe bring your gaze out over your back shoulder. But really notice the connection between your sits bones, your bottom, and the earth. Can you feel that twist coming down into your hips a little more? It'll free up your spine. And it might even let you twist a little bit deeper. Inhale, grow a little taller. Exhale, come a little deeper into your twist. And then we'll start to unwind the spine. We'll bring the legs out in front of you. 
And we're gonna come to Baddha Konasana. So we'll bring the soles of the feet together, knees out wide, and then walk your heels in towards your pelvis. Grab hold of the outsides of the feet or onto your ankles. And then we'll just keep our spine straight as we press the knees down towards the mat. And they don't have to go very far. And keep your sits bones in contact with the earth. Take an inhale here. And this might be just enough hip opening for you, or you can start to draw the heart forward. You might even use your elbows to press down into your knees or your thighs. And try to keep your spine long as best you can. Keep driving your sits bones down towards the mat. Inhale here. Exhale. Maybe you can fold a little deeper. Maybe you stay right where you are. Next, inhale. We'll lift ourselves back up to center. We'll bring the feet down onto the floor and we'll just windshield wiper the hips back and forth. Once more on each side. Bring the knees up through center. We'll take hold of the backs of the hamstrings. Come to roll down onto your back. We'll extend the left leg long. Hug the right knee into your chest. And we'll just give that leg a little jiggle from side to side. And start to cross the right knee over to the left side of your mat. Extend the right arm to the opposite side. And you can bring your gaze to look away from your knee. And maybe your knee comes all the way down to the floor. Or you leave it with a little bit of lift. If you do have a pillow or a prop, you could slide it under that knee. Take another inhale on this side. Exhale, roll back onto your back. Up the right knee in, bring the left knee up to meet it, and then we'll switch out the legs. Extend the right leg, give your left knee a little shake from side to side. And we'll start to bring it across your body. Lowering it down towards the floor. Extend your left hand away from the knee. Bring your gaze over to the opposite side. Let your body relax. Take another breath down into your belly. And as you exhale, come back through center onto your back. Bring the right knee up to meet the left. So we'll come right back where we started to our happy baby pose. Grab hold of the ankles or the insides or the outsides of your feet. You can hang out here in stillness or take your rock from side to side. Massaging out the spine. Feeling the hips lengthen as you press your sacrum down towards the mat. Take one more inhale here. As you exhale, draw in through center, lengthen the legs long, make your way into your Shavasana. Close the eyes, feel your limbs settle down onto the earth or onto your mat. Take up some space here with your feet, settling them wide apart, let your hands be off on the floor next to your mat. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale, release it out of your mouth. Settle in to enjoy your Shavasana.
When you feel ready, start to come back to your inhales and your exhales. Make them a little longer, deeper, more focused. And as you're ready to close off your practice, make your way back up to a seat or however you'd like to finish up. Remember, as you go throughout your day, uh, take note of any emotions that spring up. We've done a little bit of releasing into our emotional center today, so it's not uncommon for people to start crying for some unknown reason after deep hip opening classes. So just be aware of that. Make sure to drink lots of water and go easy on yourself. Thank you for being here. The work that you're doing for yourself is definitely very important. Namaste.